Today I'm starting a big job in the car. All of this is related to oil. Oil pump, oil pressure switch, oil drain plug, oil filter original from Volkswagen, new oil from Volkswagen, the one that the car must have, and this is a engine cleaner. Engine close to working temperature, and also I noticed that the idling is quite high, but we'll figure it out later. I think it's time to switch it off and add this uh, engine flush. Just finished, now 10 minutes with the engine on and we've drained the oil. Car keeps running, time to switch it off and wait. Oil drained, let's check up the car. Car jacked in. Funny thing, look when I try to unscrew the oil pan plug. Is it metal shavings or sand? We'll figure out in a second. Is it dirty? I'm gonna start by removing these four bolts that connect the catalytic converter to downpipe because we need to get here, there where that gasket is because our oil pan goes inside the gearbox funny, eh? yes, I could take a spanner and that's it but I think this pipe is on my way and I'm gonna regret it later first, heat reflector from the catalytic converter there is a pipe here that directs the warm air towards the intake in cold days there's a screw here, I believe it's a 9 and here and on the opposite side there are 10 they are supposed to be hexagonal and then you will have part of the wiring in this clip so can you see it? can you see it there? Huh? I removed it after a lot of struggle now this is a mistake <laughs> I figured out that I have to remove the lambda sensor from downpipe first that's our candidate and get ready to struggle and these ladies and gents is the whole downpipe <laughs> and mid silencer let's watch the phenomenal welding job done by this guy you are supposed to have clamps here and what they did is cut them and do this but only halfway so from a lift and at a certain height and this is what you get World spots. <laughs> Amazing. That's why I had to take the whole thing. Um, but you don't have to. The only thing I would I would take, I think, for more comfortability is just this first section of the catalytic converter. And remember about the lambda probe. Now we get full access to our bracket. I think. Oh, let's see if removing it I would have I will get access to the screws that are supposed to be down there. It looks like I have to remove this drive shaft for sure. I'm testing things. So far I have managed to remove one screw. There's something that works, which is basically to lift the wheel from there. So compress the suspension from that side and I have enough clearance to remove one of the screws. I also decided to remove the wheel arch cover, as you can see, and <sighs> look here. We can literally harvest. Jesus. There you go. Well, gonna keep cleaning. There you go. All right, this is how, this is how I've been working things out. Uh, I need to fix somehow the wheel because otherwise, um, yeah, the rotation from the wheel will, will not allow me to remove all the screws. So I'm just, just compressing some suspension. I think given the situation, this is the best I can do. Then, what I do is, I don't know if you will be able to see. I align, you see the, the hole, there is a bolt hole there. So what I try to do is align it from here, from this point of view, in this little transition between these two parts in the car. And then that's fixed, okay. Now I can align these two because the uh, shaft is almost straight and now uh, with a ratchet I just keep removing it here I am, new day um, 
I managed to undo the drive shaft and it's already loosened, as you can see. That's good because that will give me access to the screws right above this. Um, the only problem I have in mind is how to get access to this one here. Let's assume this is the tool. You see the angle? This is not possible. And this one. And I was looking in the manual. Jesus, there's no way <laughs> you could get the documentation in order to know what's going on. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we will rotate the crank a little bit and you will see. Can you see these notches here? We need to align them with the screws and then we should be able to remove these two ones and therefore free up our oil pump. So let's do it. Well, here's just enough clearance to rotate our crankshaft a little bit, but I would really recommend to lower the engine, which we will be doing a little bit later. But for now, it's just a little bit of rotation. There you go, the two notches in the flywheel. Let's see if we can fit a tool. Okay, I managed. I think the best option would be to take a long Allen key, or this one, a straight one, and then you should be able to get enough angle. You see, I already loosened them. This point of view like this. And I was using a little bit of a straight pipe, something like this. You just put it from the top and then you you can uh, have some leverage there. But it's not a perfect solution. So I will try to find another method because these screws, they have a, re a tall requirement and you don't want to leak there. I decided to go farther and potentially loosen the wheel hub. I started with the brake disc. It's not in a very good condition, as you can see here. It's all, yeah, it's very old and it's in its replacement. Um, brake pads are somehow okay. However, the screws for the calipers, this one is completely stuck in the bushing. Um, this one here has, I don't know if you can see it, but part of it is still inside. <laughs> oh my God. This is how the counterpart looks. <clears throat> I think I want to remove the heat uh, reflector if I can, because it's in a very bad condition. Loosen bolts and try to push towards me. Thousand years later, and thanks to this tool, now, I don't know if you can see, but we will go there. You can see there that the axle has been successfully separated and now we can start. That's it. Now we do have access, so we can continue. Before I remove the oil pan, I think it's very wise to give this a clean and remove this wire loom from there because it's going to bother me a lot, which is connected to the alternator. We'll see it in a second and give everything a wipe. So cleaning session. Removing wires from the alternator means that you need to remove this plug. There is another one here. And then down there, I don't know if you can see, there is a bracket. Before I continue, I would like to do one more thing, which is check the oil separator. So all the blow by generators, by the, all the oil vapors generated by the engine, they are, uh, res they are recirculated towards the air filter. And as you remember, when I removed the air filter, it had oil. So I think the oil separator might be blocked and it is right below the airbox and on the rear side of the engine. So let's remove the airbox. The airbox has a few screws around it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, if I'm correct. And then in order to remove the housing itself, you have a screw here, it's, it's torque 25. And then don't be fooled because there is another one here next to the throttle body. And finally, there is a rubber insert right there, just pull and it will come out. 
It looks like the throttle body was cleaned a while ago and there is some oil as you can see there. But that's for later. Now we need to follow this pipe here, this one. And it goes right behind the engine. There, that box, you see? I want to remove one screw from below and then another one from here. I don't know what I'm going to find. I don't want to have my face right below. Yeah, gravity. And this is the outcome. This is the oil separator. It's very nice that in this engine is on the outside of the engine, it's not inside, which means with time this will leak. And as you can see, it was leaking already. We'll take a look at the engine now. And I think also that the screws were not even hand tied. It, it was nothing. No, it, not, it was very, very easy to remove. This thing is clogged. Well, okay, just to confirm. It's not even a little hole there. <laughs> and this is how it looks like from the top of the engine. Yeah, if you look at the small hole, which I would say is the return line to the oil pan, doesn't look like clogged, but you can see that goopy stuff there too. So whenever we remove the oil pan, we will check if we can have access from below. And then at the big hole, yeah, I removed almost everything. Um, I'm not very good at it, as you can see. I managed to get one level deeper. And all this peanut butter is everywhere. Here I cleaned it already a little bit. But I don't think I will manage to get inside the box because it's perfectly sealed, as you can see here, you see? But it's heavy. What do you think about the O-ring? I think I can reuse it, right? I am trying to finally get access to that fella there. Um, but the, the, every single screw I remove, it's a lot of cleaning I have to do, a lot of restoration, a lot of refurbishment. So yeah, uh, for example, the wheel hub is all beaded. I have to clean all of this because I was getting greasy every time. I just wanted to do something else around it. And yeah, the brake caliper is something else <laughs> too. The drive shaft, you can see there is no color, it's all pitted, it's all rusty. The color is right there, you can see the difference between the paint and what is all, what's all rusted. I had to clean it all because it had a layer of sand and oil. So now I can work a little bit around. Um, just for the APK or the MOT, it should be just fine. But here's another thing. This wire was enclosed in a cylindrical, in a tube and also, I don't know if you remember, this fella here. I have to clean it all. Now it's all looking rather good, but it took me like half an hour to clean it. A lot of grease, a lot of debris, a lot of sand. So now the plan is to clean the surroundings of the oil sump uh, below and above and try to remove it once for all to see what's in there. Now for cleaning, I have been testing these three products, you see. Uh, one for WD-40, this is a brake cleaner, works very well. Then the same from W5, which is Lidl, uh, well, please avoid. And this one, a chain cleaner from Lidl, I think it has a little bit of uh, gasoline inside. It works extremely well, this one, and it's very, very cheap. Uh, but overall, these two are the way to go. Well, it is looking more or less clean. Not on this side though, but once I remove the oil pan, I should be able to get access there and from above too, because the is where the oil separator is. Um, but the rest looks quite okay-ish. So one more thing is I got the tool to be fitted here. This is just a normal T-shape. Allen key, but it's with a long shaft, so you can see now I can fit it. Now the big question is, how am I planning to reach the required torque here? Uh, we'll see later, but now it works. You can see how it works. Pretty well though. Hey, no bad, isn't it? This is how it looks like. I was a bit scared that I would find a little bit of this mustard thingy or the suction. Hose is, but no, not the case. 
So now I need to remove that one because we need to get access to the oil pump and I think I'm gonna go forward and check the bottom of the oil pump. Yeah, there you go. A little bit of this goopy stuff. But I think it's a bit of the oil deposition here is normal. Like it's a bit solid. But I haven't found any metal bits or something so it looks okay Ooh, the paint is dripping down here hmm. Now it's time to clean the sealant, the remaining sealant, from the other oil pump. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a job. And especially because you cannot really see behind this bag. Well, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it right there. Well, there you go. It's white-ish. That's gonna take some time. And that's exactly next to the flywheel, so you can imagine. And what you can clearly see in that corner is that there were two types of sealants mixed or placed in this oil sump. And therefore, yeah, that was the main issue. The leakage was because the previous one was not removed properly. Let's see if I managed to remove this side now. Well, this is the result. I would say it's fantastic. Instant gratification. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you what tools they use, and especially for this area here, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but all good. Then, next stop is this body here. So you started with this to remove the all the well the, the two times previous sealant. Um, it works extremely well. It doesn't leave marks because it's just a. a steel brush is just perfect it's a bit oily now but anyway then for that side you saw next to the um, flywheel i used a razor blade to remove the, the what i could remove the gross and then scotch right yeah this one leaves marks but we want the surface to be rough so the other sealant will adhere properly uh, but I didn't go around the whole perimeter with this one because, as you saw previously, there is there are already a lot of marks from machining, so it should be just fine. All right, I think we are at the point in which we can continue in an, our way to disassemble part of the engine in order to get the oil pump. Hence, what we're going to do is, or well, what you have to do is, uh, we'll need to get this engine mount out and uh, the, the service manual advises you to remove the engine cover, the airbox, and I think we will also have to at least move the uh, power steering reservoir. Um, but I already did it, no worries, this is the wire that was around the oil pan, I still need to finish it, I had to remove the cover, it was all super brittle, but I think it's not for now, and I think this way, if you place it this way, it's going to help you quite a lot. It's not going to be dangling in between all the things you have to do down there. So now, what they advise you is you need to place the engine in TDC on top that center. And there are some notches, the picture is right there, that we need to align. So they are right there, and we need to do it from the side. It looks like we are there. You can see on the right hand side the notches. And the notch in the pulley on the left hand side. One more thing, now we are supposed to have both camshaft uh, sprockets aligned where, where these holes are, they are supposed to be together and they are not. So this means we have to rotate the whole engine one more turn 
in order to get these two aligned at this point. So this hole and this hole should be at the same level, but very close together because we will position a tool there. It's time to insert this tool in order to lock the camshaft sprockets. Uh, yeah, when I'm about to do this, yeah, there is a bowling conflict here. I cannot really do anything, you see? And good thing is that they are both aligned right here. They are both aligned and it corresponds to the zero mark uh, down in the, car in the crankshaft. That means that we have a good timing. There's no more timing to do here in this car. Verify, checked, good. So I think now I will just support the engine on the gearbox a little bit so I can remove this bracket here, the uh, power steering reservoir, these wires here, and we can at least place this tool. Now we are supposed to remove these two first. The engine is now supported by the uh, jack, so I'm gonna remove this one. I don't think we'll hear much of a release, but I'm gonna replace the whole engine mount, so I think I'm gonna remove everything. <laughs> I need to use a bigger one. Definitely. Much better. Let's see. Okay. Engine is in the air. Now I'm going to proceed and remove the engine mount. I think for this, I need to remove this one too. Yup, out. <laughs> Amazing. Very easy. In that case, I don't know if I'm going to take this bracket and give it a nice paint. Let's do it. Um, that looks like a 13. Let's see. Are you a 13? I'm getting good at this. Bracket is almost out, but I need to remove something else from here. I think it's, it's, this is good from oil ventilation, if I'm correct. But I'm gonna do this. Take this bracket out. Ooh. No worries, all good. Reservoir's out. Let's remove the engine mount. And this intake too. Do we have the same? That's out. And let's take a look at this engine mount. Whoa! Oh, I'm gonna show you pictures. But yeah, it's all cracked. It's not gone, but it's cracked. Pretty easy. This part also needs some love. It's attached on the other side, I don't know where, but... This is the first... This is for the inlet uh, airbox. So this is the first segment from the pipe. So you have one, then one segment here, the other one here, and then the airbox. I'm a bit puzzled now. How am I supposed to get this bolt here? I don't have enough clearance. I had to find an alternative solution. You can see it there with a piece of wood and the jack from the car. It's literally uh, being held in on the edge where the oil pan is supposed to be. I think it's good, but the good thing is that now I have clearance to remove all the screws. I managed to lock these camshaft sprockets in place. 
you can see it right there behind the circle. There you go. Don't forget to mark the rotation of the belts on top of the belts so you don't place them in the wrong orientation later. So my tools here are locking the pulleys, my two marks on the belts. Here they are another two from, I guess, from where they serviced the belts, which is a good sign. Uh, now I'm removing the bolt from here. The engine is a little bit unstable. And yes, the bolts, I already loosened the bolts myself. They were pretty tight. Oh, they're big ones. And I think we are supposed to replace them. Anyway. Oh, there must be one more. Oh, I haven't removed this cover. And I am supposed to have like a clip here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. There's a clip here. This one. There must be another clip somewhere there. Oh no, there is a bolt. But how do we get to that bolt? You see, I'm not crazy. There's some screw here, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's another one. That's it. Oh man, there must be another one. Okay, the screw goes with this one. Still struggling to get this thing, huh? There you go. You just need to grow a pair of well, potatoes. Potato. Uh, <clears throat> hey, it looks rather good inside. I was expecting the worst. I think the tension is even new. That's good to know. This one we keep in place. Let's continue. Now that I'm down here, I need to get access to the pulleys at the bottom. So for that, we need to lower the engine a little bit, which I already did. And I need to trim, I need to adjust it a little bit, probably, but I need access to the pulleys. So uh, for the tensioner down there in order to remove the belts. So, and I forgot to mark the this one here. I'm gonna just very quickly undo this. There you go. For free, a tattoo. Now I need access to this tensioner here, which I already have, and I need to remove the belt. 60 millimeter and clockwise, and whoopa. we remove the belt, and that's all. I don't know if I will be able to look from here. That's it. Now I think I can pull it out from above. Here's my second problem. I have this tool that was uh, it's this official one from the uh, back in order to keep the crankshaft pulley in place while you can remove the bolt, right? Otherwise you have the engine rotating all the time. The problem is that I have Yuck the car, I don't have it in a, in a lift. So the stem of this tool is too big. I think I'm gonna need to cut it in half. But now I'm wondering, the length of this tool must be here for a reason. It could be because of the leverage. In the end, I removed it. It's here. And I didn't need to chop this tool. Why? Well, basically, let me show you how. This is how I placed it. 
towards the floor, you see. You may say, well, I need to um, have some leverage there, no problem. But the big boy is this guy. That's all what you need. Now, taking this pulley out is not much of an issue. You can just need to wiggle and it comes out. Of course, I already did it, but it didn't take much effort. In order to align it later, you have this little hole here that I'm now hovering over, and there is no problem. But we need to have in mind one more thing now, because I was I produced some some torque count, counterclockwise. Yeah. Now the engine is not aligned to TDC to top that center, and we must do this. Apparently, this mark and there is a mark in the oil pump inside. They must be aligned, and we can do it later so for now the only thing that i'm going to do is to remove this cover which has one screw more here and the other one here the other one i removed before um, with the uh, aluminium huge bracket with super big screws <laughs> a picture right there and um, there are two clips on this side too in order to remove this cover so clip number one is here i removed it there is one more a bit below it's going to be a struggle to remove it, so it's right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. And perhaps a screwdriver will help us. And it really did. There you go. One and two. Now we have one bolt here. It's a 10 millimeter. Out. And for the other one, we need to remove the tensioner. And it's right here in the rear that's out and the bolts and the cover is supposed to come now let's see it's slide from below i guess not from above there you go now that i have removed the cover we need to place the old screw in because we are going to align this sprocket and keep everything at TDC. Hence, we have this a ground uh, um, tooth in this sprocket, which is this one. It's here, right here. It's chamfered. I don't know if you can see it in the picture. And this one needs to be aligned with this mark in the rear. Ooh, let me put it this way. Yeah, this one here. Therefore, this mark will align with this white mark here, and we will have the engine at TDC again. In my case, uh, well, I had the tool locking the two uh, camshaft sprockets, uh, so it should anything shouldn't move anywhere. But um, yeah, I tried. There is still a little bit of room for wiggling, uh, so I just double checked that everything is in the right place, so everything is good. And in case you need to do it. That's the way I did it. So I have a ratchet and then the the old screw uh, here. And now I need to remove it. It looks like somehow everything is misaligned here, despite of having my tool locking the crankshaft pulleys on top. So what I'm going to do is, since the only relation between the crankshaft and the camshaft is this pulley, you, you need to keep them aligned. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove the belt, which is part of what the job we need to go for, and then uh, aligned or keep the crankshaft at TDC. Just wanted to verify how how did that happen. I think I missed a tooth of the belt because I don't know if you can see, but my tool, my locking tool, reaches both ends, so should be okay. All right, this tension in here was quite a bit of a learning curve to me. You need to remove this hex vault, not remove it, just loosen it, and then with an Allen key. You just go counterclockwise and you loosen the tensioner. Then you can release the belt. Now, a few more things. I like that I'm doing this because there is on the right, on the left hand side, you can see a little bit of moisture, let's say it's oil. And then on the right hand side there, on the, on the alignment pin, which is this one right there, there is also oil and the gasket is almost gone. So I think it was a very good move to go ahead and do this. Also, let me show you on top. This here is what I believe is the water pump and it's brand new. So happy, happy, happy. Now, the pinion is correctly aligned. Of course, perspective plays a 
quite a big of a uh, roll here, but I tell you. And I will remove the screw, and I think we already have access to our oil pump. Now, if the screw is too tight, you can do what I'm doing. Just don't bend the the uh, don't bend the belt like 90 degrees. But this you can keep this way, and then you can release the bolt. Tensioner out. It's brand new. Now this pinion needs to come out. Pinion out. Um, only thing is, if it's too tight, just use a mallet and gently just hit it very gently. Now we have access to our oil pump. We need to be careful. Alignment is correct. There's no liquid from the seal, which is good. And we need to remove uh, 10 millimeters hex nuts. One, two, three, four, five, as far as I know. And we will see finally the guts of this body. Screws are all the same and we will need some Loctite later. I would say the red one is medium. There we go, our leaking oil gasket pump out. Um, there are two positioning alignment pins here and there. Just uh, wiggle around a little bit. You don't have to be uh, very aggressive. And the gasket, I think, needs to be replaced. Well, it's just some pain coming out here, but... Anyway, 20 years later, I think it's worth the fact of replacing it. I am going to open this just for pure curiosity and see how it behaves in the inside. It looks like this oil pump is in a very good condition in general. Uh, if we remove this... Uh, no signs of friction some chips and yeah there are some bits here but I think if you clean it, it should be just perfect in the end it looks pretty good I don't know if you can remove this part If there are some marks, yeah, there are some marks here. Okay, just some marks, nothing, nothing terrible. I want to clean them and take another look. But how does this work actually? Well, here in this volume, we have enclosed our oil oil sump, then our oil pump. Here with these two screws, we have our oil in intake or inlet. After after the inlet. <clears throat> because of the positive displacement of this mechanism, you see, it just moves, it rotates and translates a little bit, and in each of the gaps stores oil, which is enclosed within this volume and this volume here, hmm? and the, the motion is produced by the crankshaft. Then this is the, the lid, the gasket that goes here. What happens? Every time you move the crankshaft, you're building up pressure, because you see these two gaps here. So there are two different chambers here. And what you're doing is every time you, you produce a rotation, you're building up pressure, but then you rotate a little bit more and because you're reaching this chamber here, you are releasing pressure. Therefore, all that is stored here in this gap, it will start flowing upwards. Just normal wear and tear. Cannot see much here. You can see the decoloration on the edges. Some, yeah, there are some marks like here, but nothing too big. The outside of the counterpart, some marks, but yeah, some scratches. And on the inside, same as the other one, some marks. Nothing serious. Anyway, I think it's good for preventive maintenance. And this is how the inside looks like. 